peculiar church law, why not avoid further hurt and change, and change the rule on celibacy now? Catholics of the Eastern Rite churches, and I think there are 16 or 17 of them, not very large, always allow their priests to marry before they are actually ordained. And they are fully Catholic married priests. The Vatican doesn't like it, certainly in America, they try hard to, to stop them from marrying. But it's part of the law of the Eastern Rite Catholic churches. And you also know that in order to get ex Anglican clergy, in to support the papal line, they allow them to retain their wives as well, and Lutherans. So we do have a married clergy already within the Catholic Church. It is a spurious theology of the priesthood that allows the present papal rulers and their court to insist on celibacy for the Western Rite clergy. And it is wrong, and it is unnecessary, and it is incredibly damaging both to individuals themselves, priests, and also those unfortunate people who then get involved with them. Except I have been called to priesthood for 45 years, I have to say, but what you do with it, I don't know. Anyway, the question is, the question of women's ordination to the diaconate and priesthood is hampered by the outmoded anthropology and theology of the magisterium. How can the experience of the laity and the scholarship of female and male theologians assist the Church to understand that the non-ordination of women is purely cultural and historical and has no anthropological or theological roots. So this sort of feeling that there is that, that, that the Church can't change because it's always been and we've got the tradition that's come from Jesus and Jesus was a man and Jesus had male genitals, which was the big important thing, not what Jesus said at all and how Jesus behaved to men and women. And, and that has caused every problem that the church has, in my opinion. And um, yes, we, I think there are very good theologians around at the moment, men and women, and hopefully um, what somebody said, um, what Simon said about listening will happen, and because I think if the church doesn't start listening, the institution doesn't start listening, I really can't see a future for it, which is more or less the conclusion of this book. It's a dead church if it doesn't listen. Publisher, I'm the publisher uh, from Three Score Publishing Limited. And we've published this book called uh, Sacred, Sacred, uh, Scared, Trust Me, Trust Me, I Am a Priest, by Leo Kavanagh. I mean, and it's, today's the day of its publication. My, my question, uh, I'll return to that in just a second, is related to the abuse crisis, because that book's about the abuse crisis. It has highlighted to the world that the institutional church is too monarchical, lacks transparency and accountability. The only way that it's going to be changed is when the person at the top decides it's going to be changed. That's a proof of fact. Power has been corralled into one person and that person's cronies. And it's only when a different person with a different mindset is in that position that things are going to change. I'm old enough remember 1958, when Pope John XXIII was elected Pope, mm. he would be appalled, let us say he must be appalled, <laughs> at the way the present Pope and his predecessor have behaved, and indeed at the vaccinations of Pope Paul VI. So a change of papacy, as has already been indicated, can mean a, can mean a great deal to the Church. Mm. Three things that have changed since 1982. One, Peter Patchell and everything he stands for, that is now public debate in this country. You couldn't talk about the issue of homosexuality as openly then as you can now within society. Secondly, Richard Dawkins and the people who are against obscurantism in religion. That's a big public debate in this country at the present time and the Pope appears to be on the losing side, and even we let be on the losing side. And thirdly, we've got 9-11, and the, the revolt in civilised society against religious obscurantism and fundamentalism, which sometimes it appears the Pope appears to represent, sadly. Christianity is about the incarnation. God.
becoming a word human. All right? It's about God being revealed in humanity. And once the church fails to pay due respect to that, then it starts going wrong. So everything that's about human rights is about the essence of being a human being. And that's what Christianity is all about. The incarnation, God revealed in humanity. So in other words, only five out of 22 allow lay people to be consulted on a regular basis. In many, many parishes throughout the UK, England and Wales, there are no parish pastoral councils. Priests refuse to listen to what people are saying. Priests avoid engagement with people. Priests stand apart and are not seen in many ways as fully part of a community, but in some strange way above the community. And one of the reasons for that is that they don't have sufficient normal contact. By that I don't mean abnormal contact, by the way, but I mean they don't have... They see people at church and at mass. They don't engage sufficiently with people outside of that formal type of environment. So I think what the question essentially is about is it's essentially about lay people playing a full collaborative, consultative role within the life of the church, starting at the parish, then at the deanery, then at the diocese, then at the national level, and then internationally. You need to know what you're doing and what you're about. Now, it is the church's official teaching that adult education, adult catechesis, is preeminent. What we actually do is we train children up to First Holy Communion, and some of those who don't escape actually go to school for confirmation, and then it all disappears. So you've got a vast swathe of Catholics who've never learnt any more about their faith than what they were learnt, they learnt when they were seven years old. What we need to do as Catholics in our parishes is to go back, find out, ask, demand some education so that we actually know what it's all about and we might actually find that it's about something rather different than we think here and now. In the present over-centralised church structure, how can the church revive collegiality of bishops and the importance of the local church? The church, as an institution, is a political animal, and what we've got is two sides, those that want collegiality and those that want an absolute monarchy. And at the moment, the whole thing has slid towards the absolute monarchy end. Now, with the Synod of Bishops, when they take place, there is a discussion document called the Lineamenta, and at the beginning of that, it does say that the bishops want it discussed right down into parishes. One way that the ordinary Catholics in the parish could become informed and um, stimulate some collegiality is to actually read these documents. They're available on the web and then go back to their parish priests, to their deaneries and to the representatives of deaneries, to their diocesan and representatives and say, look, this is a question which we want to discuss. And the linear mentor gives them you know, full permission to discuss that. Um, I think it's going to be pressure from below saying that we actually want collegiality. We want our diocesan bishop to be our overseer, put it that way, um, our guide, and then through him to go to the Pope in Rome as the bishop of Rome.